Hello, everyone, and welcome to a CPN, that's the Conscious People's Network's um, workshop called The Shape. It's The Shape Workshop, part two, and our instructor is Litmus A. Freeman. And let me just introduce Litmus briefly. Litmus, and I have a little blurb on you. Litmus A. Freeman returns to share his insights on how we can learn from astronomology and can convey messages and connect to our inner selves and with each other. So I'm excited to learn more extending about the astrological charts that we're going to embark on to learn more about transits and more wisdom brought to us by Litmus A. Freeman. So thank you, Litmus. Well, thank you, Enolia, for that lovely introduction. And obviously, the first thing I'd like to check is if you can see my screen now. Answer is yes. Cool. Now I'm going to just try. I know we had trouble with this last time, but I'm going to just try to see if I can get it full screen. So I think I need to go to slideshow. Now, for me, that's the full screen. Is it it's the same for you or is it still individual slides? It's still individual slides, but it's clear. OK. Um, OK, well, this looks like the same as last time then. OK, so I'll do it. I'll do it like this then. OK, lovely. Right. Well, I'd like to thank you all for uh, for joining and welcome to Alexia as well. Um, got your power back. And who we got, Kenobo and, uh, of course, Anolia, who introduced it, and Dana, I think, and uh, Charlie. Right. So let's get cracking. So what I'd like to do is just tell you what today's UCC date is. So it's the 8th of 3 Gemini. You can say the 8th of Gemini. Um, I always put the three in there just to remind everyone that it Gemini is the third month of the year or the third sign. Um, and it corresponds to the third house. So that's why I've got the three there in big letters. All right. Eight, eight, three Gemini. And, and we're in the year one, three, five, two, five. Uh, and that's since the start of the great year, of course. All right. So that's today. I just want to show you that on the calendar. So here's Gemini. And is the eighth here. I hope you can see that all right on your screens. Obviously, it's not as big like this as we'd like it to be. But um, so you got this Smegorian date down the bottom there of each day. This number here is just my, that's the number of days I've been on the planet. So I'll give my age away there for anyone with a calculator. But um, of course, yeah, I am. 35 years old as you will probably know right so that's the that's today's date the date of the workshop and of course this is all part of project freeman which kicked off in 2008 smegorian which uh which was a project i did to help me um stop paying tax for war most importantly and but also to break free from the matrix as much as possible so these are a series of wisdom workouts, as I call them, and under Project Freeman. There's quite a lot of them, um, and I'm planning to do one every UCC triad. So that's roughly once a month, all right? Um, so yeah, with the wisdom workouts, you just got to add experience, yeah? Get the, I'm sharing the knowledge, just add experience, and then hopefully you'll have the wisdom. And, Project Freeman is in three parts, free the body, free the mind, and free the spirit. I'm I'm well into the latter stages of part three these days. Um, I get a bit bored with the part one stuff, i got to be honest. Um, the part two stuff is still interesting, um, but I'm really into the part three stuff. Uh, that's where it's all at for me these days. Um, 
So it's all about all is one. Free the spirit, all is one. There we go. So it's the uh, the reuniting of science and spirituality for a sciential experience. All right, so that's what we're all about. Now, part three, each part of Project Three, three Man breaks, I could, could call it Project Three Man, actually, because it breaks down into three parts. And in each part has got three phases. So there's nine phases in all, which nine is my favorite number. Um, and today we're, you know, with, with part three, all is one. We're trying to achieve a triple A ra unity rating, as I call it, because we've got astronomology, alchemy, and then ascending using what we know about the great year to elevate our consciousness. We haven't done much about alchemy yet, the great work, but that's for another day. So let's let's get into the uh, astronomology. Now, I just want to have a quick recap of the three sessions we've done so far. All right. So if you remember back to the first of uh, Pisces last year, UCC, so that was February 19th in the Smegorian. And that's when we kicked off with the Great Year Cycle of Consciousness. So let's have a quick recap of that. I've now got a, quite a snazzy little graphic here. Just going to try to see if I can make this a bit bigger. Um, zoom. Page width. There we go. Let's make it it's a little bit bigger. So this is a great year. And we started at the top in the golden age. Years one or zero. And we descend for 12,000 years to the bottom. And now we've come up again just to here in this in the bronze age here so this is the twenty four thousand year cycle of the rise and fall of planetary consciousness pretty important to know i think now if you remember this this very busy hand hand drawn graphic uh i did which is which i can put on the thing behind me if necessary but this was a hand drawn overlay of our known history that i put onto the yoga the the great year yoga cycle um and what we saw from that is that the higher age civilizations, so back up in the golden age and the silver age here, as they were coming down, these are the higher ages of consciousness. And as we come down here, we get lower in consciousness. The, the Greeks call this the golden age, the silver age, the bronze age, and the, the iron age. So, yeah, I, I put all... The known history here this bit on and what we found is higher age civilizations lasted for thousands of years so if we look at india and egypt they go on for thousands of years but civilizations last for less and less time as we descend in consciousness so as we go down through the greek the roman and then into the english sort of empires um, you find they last less and less time and the english what they call the British, but really it's the English Empire, only lasted about 350 years, whereas India was was more like 7,000 years, you know, in Egypt. So that's the sort of thing we're talking about. Let me um, yeah. Can I just pause for a second? Can you collapse the side panels? Do you see where the little black areas this one? are? That one and the uh, other yeah. one? Oh, uh, yeah. The other one. I can't see the other one because you're... Ah, right, let's try this. Oh, yeah, that's better, isn't it? Yeah. Good idea. Good idea, Anolia. Thank awesome. Anna for that. <laughs> oh, well done, Anna. Uh, right, let me let me zoom in a bit as well, and then we should get it really snazzy. Wee. Okay, that's probably a bit too much. Um, let's just take that back a little bit. Okay. Yeah, that's much better. Thanks, guys. All right. So, so yeah, the, the known history is only 38% of the total cycle. So we only know about 9,000 years from the 4,500s to the 13,520s, which is where we are now. That's UCC. Because don't forget, the UCC year number is based on this cycle of consciousness from the start there. So in the Gregorian, you're looking at from 7,000 BCE to, to now, 
That's that's what we know about, which is all that bit there. Uh, now, how do I move slides uh, then like this? Um, you use the arrow. Use the arrow, the arrow. key yeah. on your keyboard. Okay. Uh, you should be able to hit right arrow key and it should move the whole slide to the right or go to advance. Uh, uh, it's moving the slide, but not going to the next. I might have to have the... Um... Okay. You're going to have to have the left-hand panel open then. Yeah. Okay. Views. Well, it'd be side slide pain. I mean, yeah, I'll have to have that one open, I think. So I can maneuver myself around. Okay. Right. Uh, yeah. So that's all we know about that era. Um, and if we zoom in on the Kali Yoga, the age of ignorance, the age of gross matter, um, which is 2,400 years, it's only 10% of the cycle, this bit here. But it's where all the shit happens if you excuse, you know i can't think of a better word really and we are now just 125 years from when that ended fully all right which was in 13400 ucc that's 1900 so not very long ago we're now in the dupari yoga bronze age the age of electricity all right so just a little recap there now if you these are the dates right so if you if you only took one thing from that workshop it would be i would i'm using case for kali yoga but caution right because those sort of 2400 to 2800 years i call them the age of kali confusion and cock-ups but they can be corrected and I've, i'm working on a workshop where we're going to go through those and correct them um, and of course part of what we're doing now with ucc and stuff like that is part of that work but joe so if you only remember one thing Whenever you come across any information that was originated between 900 BC and 1900 CE, just put a big warning caution stamp on it because it's likely to be corrupted in some way with, with sort of age of ignorance mentality through Kali Yoga. So there will be good stuff in there, but you, you just need to, you know, caveat that and check it all. And of course, if you think of that period, it includes all the main religions and and lots of other things. And the, the calendar we, we use now, which is one of the reasons I want to try and get rid of it. <laughs> the Gregorian one, that is, not the UCC. Um, so that's all I want, to, want you to take out of that is that, that slide there, really. So just bear those dates in mind. Okay. Now, then we did the Zodiacs and the, and the UCC. On the 12th of Aries, that was April the 3rd. And all I want to mention about that is that there, there, there are three zodiacs, the tropical, the sidereal, and the astronomical, or the constellations. And the offset between the tropical, this is the tropical, and then the sidereal is this one around here, around the outside. That The offset between those defines where we are in the great year. And the current offset is this bit here from there to there. You can see that's about 20 degrees. Now, some people use 24 degrees like in India, but that depends on the iron amps that they're using. And that's the iron amps is just the offset between the two zodiacs because the sidereal zodiac moves around the fixed tropical zodiac. All right, so the zodiacs actually form an ancient global calendar or a synchronometer, and this is what the UCC is based on, and the UCC uses a 20-degree iron amsa based on Sri Yukteswar from the Holy Science. All right, and that's today's date, and you've got the yoga cycle around the outside. This is the top now, which was up here on the, on the earlier graphic, but this is the actual orientation to us. And that's all I wanted to remind you of from that workshop. Okay, now, the last workshop we did was where we really, so, you know, what we're doing is zooming in. I started off with a great year, like we're looking at a 24,000 year cycle. Then we zoomed in to our solar system with the tropical zodiac and the stars just outside our solar system in the sidereal zodiac. 
And then with the shape of my chart, we zoomed in right into the solar system and our own charts and the Earth and its position in the solar system. All right. We did that on the 10th of uh, Taurus, which was oh, <laughs> nice one. Rubio hasn't even put the, <laughs> the smeg day on you, which is fantastic. So you'll have to look that up yourself. Um, I, I know when it was because it was 10th of Taurus, but hopefully you guys are getting into that as well. Right, so in the, in the shape, which was the last session we did, we learned how to read our birth charts, um, what the main components of a birth chart are, and that's what the shape part is. Um, now, if, if anyone's new watching this one and they haven't watched the other ones, if you just want to know what shape is all about, you just need to watch the first two hours and 15 minutes of the Shape of My Chart workshop. Uh, and all these workshops are on cpn.family, all right? So if you go to cpn.family, you can get them all there. And you can get a drink and go through them all at your leisure. Now, in that workshop for the other hour and a half or so, it was a, a late one, but a great one, as far as I'm concerned. And I think, hope, hopefully, I think a lot of you as well. Um, we also looked at the three most important parts of our chat the dominant zodiac energy in our charts and our chart rulers. And then right at the end, we got into two useful ways we can use our charts practically to help our lives and relationships. And that was looking at transits and compatibility with partners. All right. So that's where we got to. And what shape is all about is, you know, it's that astro psychology is so we can use our charts to understand ourselves better. And it stands for signs, houses, aspects, and planets, which all have energies. So now today, we're going to get into that a bit more. So just as a reminder, that's the shape, what shape's all about. The planets are the actors in our movie. The signs are how they, they act in their characters and costumes, the houses of where they act, the areas of our lives they play in their scenes in and the aspects that with who else, which other planets are they acting with. And we put all those energies together and it gives us a blueprint, uh, like a celestial blueprint, I think Kath called it the other day, uh, which I like. So um, that's what shape is all about. So let's get into the into more astronomology. Now, don't forget astrology. It's one of the hermetic arts. So it exhibits the hermetic principles, particularly, and something we're going to really look at, look at today is correspondence, as above, so below. It's derived from sacred geometry, and that's another workshop we're going to do soon, showing you how the zodiac is derived from sacred geometry. And the etymology of astrology is a telling of the celestial bodies. So it's the stars, the planets, and the constellations, but particularly, as far as we're concerned, the planets. And it's a tool to help us know ourselves through astropsychology much better, realize our similarity, celebrate our differences, and be what I call ace, to have acceptance and compassion and empathy for ourselves and, and others, to help us balance our lives and thereby raise our conscious vibration. And that certainly seems to be happening right now. I don't know about you guys, but I'm really feeling this since since the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. Unlike, what was it, 6th of Pisces, uh, 24th of Feb, I've really felt the energy's all going up. And it's like being on MDMA all the time. That's why. <laughs> Not that I've ever used that, of course. Uh, but um, yeah, that's what I'm finding. So, don't forget now, as always with this astronomology, we need to use our iPod. So you need to rem remember your perspective, your orientation, and your direction when you're looking at charts and things. You know, where are you looking from, which way are you facing, and which way are things moving? And then you hopefully don't get confused, because otherwise it can be a bit confusing, even when you've been doing it like 12 years now, like I have. <laughs> Believe me. All right, so the shape of my chart, this was something I came up with a few years back to help us 
understand how charts work. And this is part two. And I'm calling this sync in with the cycles. So it's a little bit of wordplay there, but it's the fourth of our sessions. And today we're going to learn how to sync and work with the solar cycle throughout the year. We're going to look at new and full moon cycles. So every lunar cycle or what, what is called a month, which comes from month. And with those cycles, how we can set intentions. Uh, I'm probably going to change that word intention because I don't want to be in tension when I'm setting intentions. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm more going to use like growing our seeds or planting seeds or, or setting goals or something like that rather than, than intention. Um, but anyway, we can set those things in each of those cycles as we go through them, depending on the sign and the house that the events occur in. So the sign is a collective thing that's happening to everyone, the shared energy in the zodiac, and the house is the individual way that that affects us personally based on our birth chart. All right, and if we if we understand all of that, we can go with the flow of the as above, so below. And if we got time to, today, we're going to look at um, planetary transits as well. So working with those as as they occur, and they they are happening all the time. <laughs> if you ever try to keep up with uh, all the different transits going on, you'll you'll be doing it every day. Uh, that's kind of where I've got to now. I'm every day I get. A notification about a transit like beginning or ending or whatever right now guys i hope you got all your bits and bobs with you because we're going to get straight into it with an exercise so sinking with the solar cycle first so now we're zooming in again right we we got into the solar system and we've looked at our charts and the zodiac and now we're just going to look at the year. If you remember way back at the start of the first workshop on the great year, we looked at the great year, the year and the month and the day, those four main cycles. So now we've zoomed in from the great year and we're, we've, we've reached the solar cycle. So that's the year, the, the, the orbit of the Earth around the sun or from our perspective, the apparent path of the sun through the zodiac, on what's called the ecliptic. All right. So now we want to get in sync with this cycle. You know, the Gregorian calendar is not in sync with this cycle at all. It doesn't start at the right time of the year. And uh, it doesn't line up with the seasons. It's got a, a slave and day week and weekends and all of this kind of thing. But if you want to get in sync with this seasonal cycle, uh, this is a great way to do it. So exercise one. Here we go. Right, so locate the start of the sign, and don't forget the signs of the collective. Locate the start of the sign Aries in your chat. That's the first thing you got to do. Because Aries is the first sign, the first 30 degree segment, um, which is roughly 30 days of the year, yeah, so the... There's 365 and a quarter days in the year, and there's 360 degrees. So you can see that it's roughly one degree per day. Um, it's a little bit less if you do the math, but it's, you know, 0. 0.9 whatever um, uh, of, a, of a day. So Aries is the first of those segments. It's the first sign of the zodiac, and so it's the first sign of the year. That's when the UCC year starts. That's when the zodiac starts. You can call it the astrological year or whatever, but it's basically the first sign of that zodiac. So if you find that point, see which house that that is in for you. So this is how where it affects you individually. So this is the house where you start the collective year, all right, every year. So every year on the Aries equinox, when we start the year, you'll be in the same house. So my question to you is, having done that, what area of your life do you start each year in? So this is where you might wanna check back to your juicy bits from last time. 
where we're looking at what areas the houses represent. All right. And then once you figure that out, you can go to New Year's Day on your calendar, your UCC calendar, and you can write on there, I, I start the year in my whatever house. Right. So who's who's done that and wants to chip in and let us know what house they're in at the start of the year? Anyone want to have a go? Do you want me to show you I mine? Have Lynn and Anna have both identified there. So why don't you go with each of them, Kathleen and Anna? Okay, I'm. I'll just share mine. Just yeah, an example for everyone. Good to make sure I did it right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, look, don't don't worry if you did right. It doesn't matter. It's no, you know. We all got to start somewhere, and this, this, some of this might be new to to all of you. So please don't worry about if getting it wrong. There's no wrong or right, right? We're just all learning together. But yeah, the zodiac. Yeah. So this is what I've done. I've put a line here on the zodiac ring of my birth chart. So this is where the year starts, and the year starts there for everyone. So that's the first point of the sign Aries. That's the Aries equinox. And in the Smegorian, that's the 20th of March. All right. So that's where mine is. And you can see this is this is my ninth house here. And that's my 10th house. So you can see that I start the year in my ninth house. So in this seasonal cycle of the rise and fall of light and heat, that the first point of Aries is in my ninth house. So I start the collective year that we all share in a philosophical mood because the ninth house is the house of philosophy. All right. Now, that's a very I'm just keeping it simple. I'm just using one word for now. There's a lot more to the ninth house than that, as anyone who studied this stuff will know. But just for the example, that's that's the way I start the year in a phil philosophical mood. All right. So, yeah. Right, who wants to go go next then? Anna, was was it going to be you? Yeah, I realised I went to the wrong side of Aries, so I thought it was the ninth, but it's actually the eighth. Okay, well, that's good. That's good because that gives me a good excuse to remind everyone that the Zodiac goes anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise. So we're so used to following clocks, right, because we've been misled through Kali Yoga. Don't forget clocks are a Kali Yoga invention. So they all go this way, clockwise, but everything actually goes the other way. One so, of the things around words that I was taught also, just as a little aside, was instead of saying anti-clockwise, like to be opposite of, like saying counterclockwise because of the whole little language thing. can't remember all the details around it, but since you like language things, I sort of throw it in there. I do. You, and thank you, Anna. That's bang on. Yes, counterclockwise is much better than anti um, I did have an anti-Mabel and an anti-Una, but I never had an anti-clockwise. So, um, yeah, let's use counterclockwise. Now, another another word we can use is an old... Um, oh, let's get rid of this. I still seem to have some notifications come in. Um, yeah, uh, Widdershins. Widdershins is another old-fashioned word from Britain. B-R-I-T-O-N, Britain. So Widdishins means counterclockwise. So we can use either of those. But yeah, we've got, look, this is Aries and Taurus is there and that's Gemini. So we're going this way. So yeah, Anna, if you, maybe you went there, but that's okay. Because here's, we can see Pisces and the cycle ends at the end of Pisces and starts at the start of Aries. So there we go. That's the point there. Um. So yeah, what? So you said it's in your eighth house, did you? Yeah, that's right. Okay, cool. So do you remember what what the eighth house is all about, or do you want to have a look at your juicy bits and tell me? I'll have to have a look at the juicy bits. Um, where is it? Oops. Maybe while you're having a look at that, um, Kath, did you want to have a go? I guess my I start my new year in eleventh house of community and friendships. 
co-creating. Excellent. Yep, yep. The 11th house. Cool. All right. Yeah, and that's what I call the house of sharing because it's all about networks and groups and friendship things and societies, associations. And I spell sharing there with an A-I-R, sharing, because the 11th house goes with Aquarius and Aquarius is an air sign. So that's to remind people it's actually, an, even though it's called the water sharer, it's called the water bearer. I call it the water sharer because if you look at Aquarius, he's actually pouring the water out. He's not just keeping it all to himself. <laughs> so that's quite symbolic. So yeah, the water sharer is an air sign, not a water sign. So excellent stuff, Kath. Um, Anna, did you manage to get back to the eighth house and have a look what that was all about? Uh, transformation. Transformation, great. All right. So maybe for you, you start the the year in a transformative mood. We could say that in a simplistic fashion. Um, or some other of the aspects that go with the eighth house, like death and rebirth, uh, the phoenix rising from the flames, you know, the uh, the transformation of letting go of one thing that doesn't serve you anymore and starting a, a new thing. Obviously, it goes with the sign Scorpio, the eighth sign of the year. We can see that here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is Scorpio. So the Scorpio goes with the eighth house. And one of the things Scorpio is about is secrets. Um, yeah, so what do you think of being in the eighth house at the start of the year, Anna? I think that it sort of ring, rings true sometimes about the mood that I'm in around my birthday. But um, I also feel like I'm in that phase right now. So <laughs> it's interesting. Okay. And when is, when's your birthday again? Do you mind sharing that with us? Uh 24th September 1980. I've got my Smagorian, but I mean the other one, but I can't remember it off by heart at the moment. No, that's okay. Um, the 24th of September. Sorry, September. September. Yeah, so you just you just squeeze into Libra there, don't you? Yeah, it'd be 23rd UTC time. Okay. Yeah, but don't forget that's. That's the the sign you're born in, yeah? Not the yeah. house you're in. Yeah. yeah. So so what we're saying is at the start of the sign of Aries, you're in your eighth house. Yeah. Um the, the eighth house goes with Scorpio. But so you might you you may as you get into sync with this cycle, you may find that you naturally uh do things associated with eighth, eighth house energy. Or if you haven't been doing that, you might want to give it a try and see how it works for you. Because in theory, if you sink in with the energies that are there and work in those areas, you should find a you know a, a lot of success with those areas of your life at the at that time of the year. Um, depending what other what other aspects you got going on at the time as well, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So anyone else want to have a go or sh or got any questions about that? I'm happy I... to share. Yeah. OK, Charlie, go for it. Um, third house. Communication. Third house. Yeah. OK. So you you start the year in your third house. Um, yeah. Communication. Uh, Mercury. So that's about intellect and the inquisitive mind and learning uh, and communicating. It's about um, empathy as well. It goes with Gemini, the sign Gemini. So, yeah. How does that feel for you, Charlie? I can re I, yeah, I resonate with the communication piece because it's like I suddenly wake up and it's like, Oh my God, right, let's get everything organized <laughs> for the next year. <laughs> yeah. Like, cool. So, yeah. Excellent. That's good then. All right. Any, before we move on, um, guys, any, yeah? I, I, I'm, I'm last and I, I think I'm in, if I'm reading this right, but I'm not sure if I'm reading it right. 
I missed that, sorry, in earlier, which house? I said, I think that I'm in the 10th house, but I'm not sure if I'm reading it correctly, reading the chart correctly. Okay. Um, well, I can, uh, I mean, I don't know if you, have you got a paper chat you can hold up to the screen or? No, I don't have a paper one, but I could do a share real quick and just show you really quickly. Right. Yeah, yeah, do that then. Okay. There it is, because I'm just not sure. Is this the line that I'm supposed to be reading right here? Uh, so so there's Aries. It's this line here. There's Pisces. This is Aries. So that's the line there. So that's in your 11th house. Yeah. 11th this, is, house. this is X1, 11. Yeah. Oh, sorry. You, you probably can't see my mouse now, can you? I can't see your mouse. That's okay. But X1 <laughs> sorry. is 11. That's okay. Yeah, so but uh, basically top kind of top left you got the Aries symbol, yeah. If you can you put your okay. mouse on the Aries symbol for me? Yeah. Right here. And then yeah, and then to the right you've got the Pisces symbol. Okay. Yeah, that, that one. And then the line in between those two. Ah, uh, that there I am. That's the that's the cusp, okay? So that's that's the start of the year. The collective year that's the 20th of march first first the aries equinox yeah so you can see then that that's in your where you've got your mouse now that's in your 11th house all right okay thank you because we're going at, we're going anti-clockwise don't forget yeah okay so if you just if you just point your mouse to your to your 11 there yeah and you can see that if you just go slightly to the left and line up with that mark between aries and Spicy, yeah. You can see that that's in your eleventh house. Okay, is that clear? Okay, thank you. That's okay. So again, that's that's the same um, same house as Kath, right? I think. Yeah. Cool. Right. Can I? I need to share my screen again. Uh, let's do that. Uh, which one are we on? This one. All right, so everyone good with that one? Should we move on? Good, all right. Um, I don't really see the chats while I'm in this mode. So if you if you say, if anyone's sending me questions, I'm, I can't see it, okay? I, so I'm if, reading them up that they come through and that excellent. was Celestia basically saying that she believed that hers was in the fourth, I believe. Right, okay. Who's that again, sorry? It's me, oh, Alexia. Um, oh, hi, Alexia. I'm just trying to catch up, but I, yeah, it looks like a uh, fourth or fifth. <laughs> My house, I will. I, have to... yeah. I have your chart, Alexia. Um, for the Placidus system, and your Aries is in the fifth house. Okay, okay, thank you. Thanks. <laughs> thank thank you. I'll just send it to um, you, Kath. <laughs> thank you, Kath. Um, Hopefully you can see that then, uh, oh, okay. Alex, Alexia. Right, if you, the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah. You, don't forget it goes anti-clockwise. So if you drew a line on your chart, this is yeah. one of the reasons I love to print things off and use paper and pens and draw on things because it's so much easier than just doing everything digitally. Personally, I find that. I mean, I, maybe it's uh, the era I'm from. I don't know, but. Uh, Digital's good, you know, digital's great. I mean, it means we can do this kind of thing, but um, you can't be, it's like books, right? You know, it's nice to be able to read a book if you can read it any other way on a tablet or something. But, you know, you can't be just having a book in your hands and feeling the paper and turning the pages, personally, anyway. So let's let's move on. But yeah, print your charts off and draw all over them, you know, and put marks on them and stuff. And it really brings it to life for you. So that was the exercise one. So let's have a look at exercise two. Now I'm not gonna go through the whole of this, but this is something you can do in your own time, offline. So we're still syncing in with the solar cycle. So we're flowing in sync with the year. This exercise is, so we've done exercise one. So you know the house, 
where you start the year, yeah? So make a note of that house. And that means now you can work your way through your UCC calendar and you can mark the days upon which the sun enters each of your houses. Now, how the hell are you going to do that? I hear you cry. Well, don't forget zodiac degrees equal pretty much UCC dates, all right? So whatever degree of, of a sign you've got, a house cusp or a planet or anything in, that's a date in the calendar. Because, you know, the zodiac is the ancient global calendar. So if you do that, you'll be in sync with the area of your life being illuminated by the sun, your motivation throughout the seasonal year cycle, all right? So my question then would be, what house energies are you likely to be most motivate, motivated by when, at which times of the year? So let me show you that one in my chat. Woo! God, this is sensitive, this mouse. Uh, right. So let's have a look at my chat again. All right. So let me show you this example. All right. So the sun enters my 12th house at five degrees cancer in the zodiac, right? So here we are. Look, here's my 12th house. And you can see there's the start of cancer there. So we go five degrees, each of these little sections here. You know, you got you got each degree marked, and then you got a little extra mark at every five degrees. So you can see that's the fifth, five, six degrees there. So that's my twelfth house cusp. So when this, you know, this zodiac cycle of the year, when the sun is moving through, when the sun gets to here at five degrees Cancer, that's when it, it enters my twelfth house. So my motivation. You know, the sun is your motivation. My motivation at that time of the year is likely to be 12th house related. Now, and that's all about the psyche and the, the depth of the, the psyche and the imagination and the connection to the highest self and about spirituality stuff and deep, deep stuff and past life karma and all this kind of stuff. All right. So. Five degrees cancer in the zodiac corresponds to the UCC date five cancer or five four cancer if you want the full date. But we don't always have to write the full date. You know, in fact, I often just write five and then the cancer symbol. <laughs> it's, it's much quicker. So five degrees cancer there in my chat, that's the fifth of cancer in my calendar, right? So on that day in my UCC calendar, I can write 12th house or X11 or whatever, but then I know from that date onwards, I'm going to be in my 12th house in the year cycle, all right? So let's have a look. Here's four cancer this year. This is the, so that's next month in the UCC, all right? And here we go. Here's five. Let's have a zoom in a little bit. So here's the fifth of cancer in the UCC, and you can see there, my that's my 12th house cups cusp look is to be precise it's at five degrees cancer and 40 minutes of arc all right so 540 cancer and i put the time there that that occurs using an ephemeris so i know at half past seven on that date the sun's going to go into my 12th house and then from then on until the next cusp i'm going to be into 12th house things all right so does that make sense to everyone? And please, if it doesn't, please, please, please just say and ask me and we'll go through it again. If there's anything you don't understand, you know, because it was quite a while ago now, a month ago or, or more that we did the other workshop. Um, and if you haven't had time to watch it back so much, you might, you know, some of this might be new to you. So if, if it is, just shout up and we'll go through it. No worries. But what you can do. Sounds like everybody's okay. Everyone's okay. Cool. Good. So, you know, what you can do, if you look at your chat.
you can go through the whole year. So like we we know, we figured out for me, look, I'm I'm in my ninth house at the start of the year. Then on the 5, 10, 15th, on the 15th of Aries, I get to my 10th house. And on the 5, 10, 15, 20, 25th of Taurus, I get to my 11th house. And then the example we just did on the 5th of Cancer, I get to my 12th house. So I've on my calendar, I've got all those dates marked like, like this. I've got an orange thing and I've got 12th house and then and the X11. And then I know that's when I'm in my 12th house. And I've done that for all the ones throughout the year. So you can do that as well, okay? So all you got to do is look at your charts and just see where all your light, your cusps are. Write down the degrees and the sign that they are. Then find that date in the calendar. Then you can write on there, on that date, whatever house it is. And then when you look through the year, you'll see as you'll see you moving through your, your house cycle, which is your personal year cycle, right? So I, I am a little confused here. So like, is this, okay. so this is relating back, relating to what we just did with like my, the, my kit starting with the collective year of transformation or like, cause so like that's, or your, the, like our sun sign when we were born. Um, Right. Well, you you were in your eighth house of transformation at the start of Aries, yeah. That's what we were saying. Yeah. Right. But that's for you. And then okay. everyone's in different houses, yeah. Depend. But but we're all at the start of Aries. But then we're all in different houses, depending on the orientation of our chart, yeah. Yeah, because that like on the actual, you know, start of Aries, twentieth of March, m my eighth house will be somewhere different. But when I was born, the start of Aries was on the eighth. Was at the, I was at the eighth house. Yeah, exactly. Now this is a good point. Thank you, Anna. So, if you remember last time when we were going through the chat, don't forget that the in your birth chat, the the positions of the houses and the planets and the signs and everything, they're all fixed. Yeah, that's a snapshot yeah. of the time and place you were born. Yeah. Yeah. And that's your reference for everything all through your life. That's you. That's your reference. So that stays fixed. Okay. Now, yeah, on the on the twentieth of March, um, every year things are moving all the time, right? Yeah. Things, but for you, every year on the twentieth of March at the Aries equinox, the start of the UCC calendar, you will always be. With the sun, in the sun's, the solar cycle, the year cycle, you'll always be in your eighth house. Always. All right? Because it follows your birth chart. Yeah, that's what I'm not, not understanding. Because. Okay. Yeah. Because like, my birth chart, like, that's the fixed thing. Mm hmm And so... On the like obviously I wasn't born on the twentieth of March. Hmm. Um. I so, but because that's my birth chart and say imprint of energy from that exact time, when yeah. it actually is the twentieth of March in Aries, or whatever the beginning, then I have those influence of that because that's where that was on my birthday. Yeah. Absolutely. So that becomes okay. into that time every year? Is every year. Time? Yep, a absolutely right. Every year, exactly the same. Because it's a cycle. Okay. This is the this is the whole point. The the zodiac is a, a cycle. <laughs> so I don't even know, like so those the imprint of my birth energy will come with me to the beginning of the not my personal year, but the beginning of the collective year. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I mean the way the way to think of it is um is your birth chart is like your own personal calendar. Mm. 
Yeah. Yeah, but I, yeah, I, I guess yeah. So like, I guess I so, when you say that I see that as so my year personally begins for me on my birth date. It doesn't begin at the collective year. But this is how um, to the collective year. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's where I no. Guess. All right, no, I understand. It's actually there's three. You know, there's three zodiacs. Well, there's three years as well. <laughs> so let me just so let me just explain. So we've got the we've got the um the year that you're you saying your personal year starts from your birthday, right? Yeah, because I thought that's what you meant. Around my birthday, no Aries is in my eighth house. So that energy of transformation is happening around my birthday, not necessarily at the time of the collective year. Yeah, no, no. So what we've got, we've got, a, we've, you know, we count our age in years from our birthday, yeah? Yeah. But that's not the start of our personal year in our birth chart. That's, that goes from our ascendant. Now we're not, we weren't going to get into that tonight because I didn't want to go too, too mm -hmm. deep into it on the first one. But we move through our houses each year the same the same way every year it repeats exactly the same based on our birth chart so mm -hmm. if we go back if we go back to this first point of aries you know if you look in your chart that's when the start of the, the year that's shared by everybody starts mm -hmm. and then it will, but for you it will be in one house or other yeah okay all right, now to your personal year, going through your 12 houses, that starts at your ascendant, all right? Okay. So for me, if we can see here, my ascendant is like seven degrees of Leo, right? Uh -huh. So on the seventh of Leo, UCC, and you can convert that back to a Gregorian date, whatever that is, but on the seventh, Leo I start my personal year I, the sun goes into my first house and it's all about the self and then on this date near the 25th of Leo it goes into my second house and then it's all about values mm -hmm. and love and beauty and all of that stuff and so on so my personal year journey through my 12 houses starts from my ascendant okay yeah okay. the age your age you count in years in the Gregorian calendar starts from the day you were born. Yeah. yeah? Well, with the but sun. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yes. You can see for me. So for oh. me, look, my, my son, my son is here hmm. in my 11th house. So when I was born, the son was in my 11th house. So I was born in my 11th house. Yeah. Hmm. You know what I mean? The sun was in my eleventh house in the year cycle. Okay. So it's it's not to get confused. So your <laughs> this birth chart this birth chart is my personal calendar, right? And it always repeats exactly the same every year. Hmm. And that the way we do horoscopes is we look at where all the planets and the orientation of the signs and everything is now, and we relate it back to this this blueprint yeah? yeah and then we can we can see how the energies are affecting us based on this birth energy that we always carry with us all right okay okay all right so so the moment we're looking at the sun sorry what oh the the, the last the last little thing we were working out was the sun right so Ah, yes, the, the exercise. Yeah. So we did, we did the, we did looking at the, where we start the year. And then what we're doing here is we're saying that as we go through the collective year, we can mark on our calendar all the points where the sun moves into all our houses. Okay. okay. So for me, I was showing this example of where the sun goes into my 12th house here on the 5th right. of Cancer, yeah? Because that's in my blue birth chat. So that's always going to be the same every year, yeah? All my life. 
So on the fifth of Cancer, the sun goes into my 12th house. So on my calendar, I can put on the fifth of Cancer here, 12th house. And, that's, and okay. I zoomed in there. Yeah. So you okay. can do that. You can do that as well. And that's a good exercise for you to get really get to know, to follow the cycle through and to mark all your points. Um, so again, it's, it's really making the point that, that you, the zodiac, your birth chart, and that, they're all synchronometers, they're cyclical, they're calendars. They, that's, you know, that's what they are. <laughs> so there's a lot of confusion about this. And it's, yeah. you know, it's mostly Carl Yoga confusion. And because we all use this Gregorian system, you know, we've kind of forgotten how the actual cycles work, but this is how they work in reality, you know, and this okay. is how they affect us. Yeah, that's that's the point. So for me, my son is like zero degrees of Libra. So it's like right on that line between the second and the third house almost. Like it's like I'm kind of sitting on it. <laughs> By like yeah, like yeah. less than a degree away from the yeah third house, I guess moving from the second to the third. I think. Um, are you are you talking signs now or houses? A house. house. So like I'm like yeah like because I remember your birthday is like the day after the Libra equinox, right? Yeah. So I meant like I guess they call it zero. What do you say? Zero point four three degrees Libra. Yeah, that so that's that's forty three minutes. So not even one minutes. degree of Libra. So basically, that means you're in the first degree, yeah, because you haven't got to one degree yet. But you've gone, you've gone past zero. So you're in Libra, but you haven't even got to the first, the end of the first degree. So you're in the first degree, the very first degree of. So it's like the first de full day of Libra, yeah. Yeah, I guess there's so, a line there too. So your sun, on your chat, your sun will be showing right on the cusp of uh, Virgo and Libra, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, I see it now because of um, they just sort of put them next to each other, but I can see the actual mark is where that is. That's so, it. yeah, that's in the okay. second house, so I'm still like 10 degrees away from the third house. Okay, great. There you go. Okay. So what you can what you can do with the calendar is you can you can get all the if you look if you go round your, your chart mm -hmm. so you go round your chart and write write down all the, the degrees that these cusps are at, yeah. And you can you I mean I do it because the calendar starts in Aries, I just start in Aries and I go through the calendar. Um I could show you if I get my my calendar. I, mean, I, I might do that in a minute if it just to clear it up. But basically, I start I start in the month of Aries and I go through and I think right. The first thing I come to here is my tenth house cusp. So I write that on my calendar, and I got Jupiter right there, virtually on the same day. It is actually on the same day, so I put that on my calendar. And then I keep going around here and then I go, all right, when I get in, I'm in the second month in Taurus and I've got my 11th house cusp. So I write that on there. And then I keep going. And once I'm into Gemini, I've got my Mercury there and my Venus. So I put those on my calendar. Let me just show you Gemini and I'll show you what I mean. So that's not Gemini, that's Cancer. Here's Gemini. So look, here's Gemini. Here's, this is Gemini, and here's my Mercury look from my birth chart. Seven degrees Gemini, and Venus at ten degrees Gemini. And here's my chart look. And there's Mercury. This is five, yeah. six, seven, seven Gemini, and this is ten Gemini, Venus. Okay. All right. Yeah, and there, my, and there they are on the calendar. Yeah. Sorry, what? I missed uh, that, sorry. No, no, sorry. I just yeah, it's just taking me a while for this to sink in. Of course, of course. Hey, don't worry, it took me years. You know, I'm trying to introduce this this to you because this is how it works, but it took me a long time to figure this out, you know. So and for it is... who, are 
each person, the houses, like the houses in general in the zodiac, the houses and the zodiac simp signs, they're not fixed with each other, right? They can move differently or in your like, birth chart, you mean? Like in general, like the houses and the zodiac, they're not always in the same place. No, they're very the only the only way they would be aligned with each other. Hmm. So for me, if I had Aries here where I've got Leo and my first house. Yeah. There's no know, the only way in the houses and the zodiac in the sense that, you know, they're always in sync or something. There's an absolute correspondence. Yeah. So as above, so below. So the signs of the zodiac correspond to the 12 houses. And this is what makes us, this is one of the things that makes us unique. Because if we were born at sunrise on the equator, on the Aries equinox, and this was in the last, maybe on the, the second workshop. So if you want to check back, go through the second workshop, you'll see I explained how the sine wave goes. We looked at Stellarium and we looked at the tropics and everything. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. So, yeah. Okay. So if you if if you were born at six a.m. on the equator, um, on the Aries equinox on the twentieth of March, hmm. you would have a chat. You would have what I you might remember. I called it the birth, P A R T H, <laughs> the birth chat. Because yeah. that's the chat of the earth, the whole earth. It starts, uh, and then you would have you would have Aries here, the first point of Aries here, and you'd, your first house would be the same size as Aries, thirty degrees, and it would be lined up with Aries. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I'm yeah? starting to land. I, I'm getting yeah. a bit more clarity. Thank you. That's all right, but because we're all born at, you know, hardly anyone is born at. 6 a.m. on the equator on the Aries equinox. <laughs> we're all we're all born all over the place. So yeah. that's why we all have that's why we all have unique orientations to our charts. Yeah. So yeah. but these 12 houses, they're always in this position, starting from one here round to 12, all right? Hmm. For everyone, everyone's first house starts here. And everyone's 12th house ends there at, at this point, the ascendant. But the sizes of your houses going round, yeah. using the plaster system will depend on the angle that the earth was tilted. Oops. You know, imagine this, this is the earth. Imagine this is the pole of the earth. Hmm. You can imagine it like that. And it's spinning anti-clockwise. So that's the top of my chart. The top of my chart is in Aries because that's the way it was orientated when I was born. All right. So, so that's we'll all have the MC line, isn't it? The what? Sorry. The MC, the MC line? Yes. The MC, the right there. Yeah. That's the mid heaven. Yeah. So that's the way the earth was when I was born. And that means I've got, I've got, it's, so I haven't got Aries. Uh, in my first house, I've got Leo, yeah? So that's that's one of the things that makes me different to you, yeah? Because you've got... What's your ascendant, Anna? Cancer. Right, so you've got... Your house of self is in the sign of cancer. And cancer is about home and family and sensitivity. So that would make you... Your your self identity that would make that much more sensitive to to issues to do with home and family, right? But as for me, it's all about Leo things, which is all about creativity and fun and, and humor and entertainment. So no surprise, <laughs> no surprise. I love jumping up on stage and showing off and playing guitar and singing, you know, because I got Leo on my. First house, and I'm like, hey, look at me, everyone. Look how cool I am. I'm not cool at all, really, but you know, in my little <laughs> world, I'm Leo and I'm loving it, you know. So, you know, this is what makes one of the things that makes us unique individually is what sign as above the sign we've got 
so below in our house. Because mm. the first house is the so below of the first sign as above Aries. Yeah, but I haven't got Aries, I've got Leo and so on. So it's the same for everyone. And this is what the one of the things that makes us unique. And if you really want to get this, I would recommend probably going back through at least the first two hours of the last workshop and even yeah. watch it. Watch it a few times or have it on when you're making bread. You know, I'm not, I'm not, obviously I don't want you <laughs> much to take over your life or anything, but <laughs> if you really want to get into it, like use it like a podcast, you know, and just, just have it playing when you're doing other things or something, you know, and then, you know, depending on how much you want to get into it, but if you really want to get into it, because I got to say doing this, it's really changed my life. You know, it's, it's really opened up. You know, I just so I can't believe I'm so in flow with the with the universe right now. It's it's amazing. You know, I've never felt like this in my entire life. And I'm sure a lot of that is just because I've been doing this now for so many years. And maybe maybe Kath who does this quite a lot as well. I don't know how you feel, Kath, but yeah, you know, you feel the same thing, right? You you just really feel the energies. So all right, is that is that okay for everyone? Yeah, thank you. That, that's yeah, right. like oh, coming at it that's from a different view. like it's a little bit different way of presenting it from last time so i'm understanding it in a different way if that makes sense <laughs> yeah sure i mean um it's getting clearer thank you good that's okay well thank you for asking such a good question because obviously that's how we can all learn by answering questions as answering questions that we can all sort of figure it out um but yeah, this is really following on from the last workshop where we just explained what all these things are and what they do. And now we're, now we're looking at how can we sink in with them and use them practically, you know, not just the theory. Oh, well, that's nice. Well, I know what, what Gemini stands for and we, I can talk about it with my friends. That's cool. But the real valuable practical use of it is like, how can I work with those energies, you know, all the way through the year? So I'm always going with the flow, my own flow in in the flow with the zodiac, and where all the planets are, and that's what we're trying to get to, and that's what the UCC can really help you do. You know, and maybe to start with, you can just get your Gregorian calendar, and you can write on the twentieth of March. You know, I would write there. I'm in my ninth house. But on my UCC calendar, that's New Year's Day, and I write on New Year's Day, I'm in my ninth house, you know. But I'm, I mean, I know that now. I'm, not, I'm always in my ninth house on New Year's Day, always, every year, because it's a repeating cycle. Okay, so let's get back to where we. I got go. a Thanks, question. Anna. Yes, a Charlie. Question. <laughs> which which <laughs> slide do you chart, want me to put up? A question. You can see this on the chart. There's that little thing down here, a little table. Um, I can't see you at all. Sorry, I've only got four people in okay. my side bar. Well, in the chart maybe, that you sent me... me, there's a little table, and it's got all the degrees on it. Are they the degrees you're talking about? Like yes, Capricorn? yeah, yes, so yes, they are. Like twenty point five nine degrees Sagittarius, for example. Yes. Awesome. So that means my birthday is my ascendant, yeah. and that's twenty nine point. Oh, six degrees Sagittarius, correct? Your ascendant right. isn't your birthday. Your no. ascendant is the start of your first house. But yeah, on your birthday, yes, your ascendant was at 29 degrees Sagittarius. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So you, you can either go around your chat and look where all the cusps are and read off the degrees and that's what i was hoping you'd do just so it gets you used to using the chat and knowing where where everything is yeah or you can cheat like charlie's doing <laughs> nice work, charlie yeah but, it's I, mean, not that I wanted to I'm, cheat i was like i was trying i was working some out and i was like but they're the same numbers as these ones down here absolutely well done darling absolutely yes you can definitely do that and it's much quicker you, you might not get to you used to the chat and the zodiac so much doing that way, but yes. Well, that's, you know. that's just the planets, though, usually in that chart. It doesn't show you the degree in which you move into each house, I don't think. Right. Got a table the, cap 
That right. Let me answer that one. So the cafe astrology charts only have the planet table and the aspect pyramid. Yeah, the step pyramid thing on the left at the bottom. If you want, if you want a chart that's got your the cusps of your houses on as well, you need a, an astro.com chart. All right, or an astro is the is the website, but it, you can get to it astro.com. And if you if you get your birth chart done there, you'll have a table with all your house cusps on as well. Or if you get your uh, birth chart interpretation report from Cafe Astrology, some of you got that right. Um, if you look in the first few pages of your Cafe Astrology report, you'll you'll have a table there, and it'll tell you all the houses and what degrees they start at. All right. So you do it that way, or you can do it for the exercise by going around your chart yourself and writing down the degrees. Yeah, Charlie, and if you were doing that, and then you look, look, you can check that you're right. You know, if you do it going around your chat, you can check if you if that's right by comparing it to that table. Yeah, that's what your... I did. And I was like, oh, yeah, that looks right. So I wanted to check with you that I was seeing the right yeah. thing. Yeah, you are. I mean, like I say, if you're only looking at your Cafe Astrology chat, it will only have your planet degrees on it. And if you want your house cusp degrees, you need to look in your Cafe Astrology report. In the first sort of three or four pages, it's, you'll see a table there that lists all the house cusps. All right? Thank you. That's okay. And then, as I say, all of those degrees, they're all dates. Yeah? Because we've got 360 degrees in the cycle and we got 365 and a bit days in in the year cycle so we've roughly got one degree for each day so if you've got a house cusp 29 degrees sagittarius you can go to 29 sagittarius in your ucc calendar and write on there ascendant my ascendant and that's the start of your personal new year all right Cool. So yeah, I wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna. You know, we won't have time tonight to go through and do all twelve house cusps for everyone, obviously, and put them on the calendar. But if you look, if you check this slide, and obviously, I will share uh, a, a juicy bits pack again from to, from from today with all of these slides with the exercises in. Then you can just go through it at your own pace and when you're doing that if you've got any questions just send me a message on telegram and i'll do my best to answer it all right because i know this stuff can be a bit confusing when you're new to it all right so i understand that um but i know you're all really intelligent people and i know you're going to get it once you do it a few times all right so is everyone okay with this exercise yeah about your house cusps putting your house cusps on your calendar yeah right so let's move on obviously what you probably realize is this is all a secret plot to get you using the ucc calendar <laughs> and many a true word spoken in jest <laughs> no but hopefully you know you'll see the value of the ucc then is that it it's your birth chat in a calendar all right you can you can use them both for the same thing okay so if you do that you'll see which energies that you're likely to be most motivated by at which times of the year based on which house the sun is in yeah so if you're in your first house you're going to be all into the self and it's a good time of year to work on yourself and if you're in your second house, it's a good time to work on your wealth and your values and love aspects and so on and so on. You can look at all the qualities from the juicy bits, slides, which what each house stands for. And then you'll know at that time of the year in your calendar, that's what the energies you're going to be working with. All right. OK. So I showed you my 12th house cusp example. I showed you where that is on 
the calendar. And that's it zoomed in there. Okay. So again, part two, exercise two, if you want to, this is more of exercise two. So if you want to do what Charlie was doing there, if you feel motivated, <laughs> check where your son is. Um, you can do the same thing as, as the house cups with your planets, like I just was showing you in my Mercury and Venus, all right? So again, you just establish the degree of the zodiac at which your planets are located. And then you write the planets onto your UCC on the corresponding date. And this will show you the days on which the sun conjunct or be conjunct each of those planets. And that means it's illuminating that planet's energy and motivate you in that way, in the way of that planet. So again, let's have a look. If we look at, let, let me look at my moon as an example of this one for a planet. So my moon is in a 27th degree of Gemini in the zodiac. Look, there it is. That's Gemini. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 27. That's my moon, 27 Gemini. So that corresponds again to the UCC date, the 27th of Gemini. So on that day in my calendar, I can write moon. And if I want, I can put the precise degree in the time the sun will conjunct it using an ephemeris. An ephemeris is, you can get an app on your phone with an ephemeris on and it'll tell you exactly where all the planets are at what time and everything. It's incredible what you can do now. That people used to have to look up in books, you know, before. So let's look at this moon example. So 27 of Gemini. So is, is Gemini, three Gemini in the calendar. And if we go down to 27, look, there's my moon. So let's zoom in a bit. So here's my moon, look. So to be precise, is it 26 degrees of Gemini, 39 minutes and 45 seconds <laughs> to be absolutely precise. So it's in the 27th degree of Gemini yeah and there we are 27th of Gemini so it's bang on all right now this won't always be bang on because because of the earth spinning an extra quarter of a turn every year to complete a cycle it'll move by six hours these events will move by six hours each year until there's a leap year and then it'll go back a day and then it'll go start again and it'll keep doing this you know it goes back to the day forward six hours and back again so there's the moon. All right, so you can mark that on your, you can do that with yours at your leisure in your own time. And again, just ask me any questions you might have. Right, now, just a, a word, a word about solar returns. So what some people call birthdays. You know, when we when we have a birthday, we say many happy returns. What we're saying there actually is many happy returns of the sun to the same degree of the zodiac it was when you were born. <laughs> okay, that's what that's what returns comes from. So these don't necessarily occur on the same day, right? So your solar return isn't always on your actual Gregorian birthday, right? In fact, mine is very rarely on it. So let, let me just show you that. So my son is in the 30th degree of Gemini in the Zodiac. There we go. Looks right at the end there, the last degree of Gemini before we go into Cancer. So that corresponds to the UCC day 30 Gemini, same. And so on that day, on my calendar, I can write my solar return. And if I so wish, I can put its precise degree and the time it will occur using an ephemeris, all right? So I can tell exactly when I have completed an orbit. Because, <laughs> you know, we we could, our age in years is really the number of orbits around the sun we've completed, yeah? And some people celebrate their birthday the day before their actual solar return, you know? So it's good to actually know when your solar return is. 
But yeah, mine's look, mine's 30 degrees Gemini. That's the 30th of Gemini in the calendar. So here's 30th of Gemini. And you can see there I've got solar return. 29, this is where my sun is, 29 degrees, 12 minutes and 43 seconds. And so it's in the 30th degree of Gemini. And there's that's the date, the 30th of Gemini. So at 1.20 in the morning, that's when my that's when I'm gonna be 61. All right. Now my Gregorian birthday, so you can see this, this is the 20th of June here. Look. But my Gregorian birthday is the 21st of June. Because I was born early in the morning. So off, you know, most most often in my life, my solar return has been on the 20th of June, not on the 21st. Um and you can check that for yourself as well. So I just want to mention that so you know when your actual birthday really is. <laughs> and of course, it'll move by six hours each year until a leap year, and then it'll go back again by a day. Right. Everyone okay with the solar return? Yep. All right. We haven't got much longer now. So let's just talk about moons. So we've done, so now we're zooming in again. We zoom, we got to the year cycle. And now we're going to zoom in to the moon cycle. Because of course the moon goes around the zodiac every month. It's where we get the, the name month from. So therefore goes around your birth chart every month goes through all 12 houses and all 12 signs and crosses all the planets and the cusps of the house every month. So this is the fastest moving thing in the chat. So this is an exercise, the third exercise. This is what we can do with new moons. And this is where we get really, this is where it gets really practical and useful day to day. All right. So we can flow in sync with the moon cycle. So if you want to try this, if you locate the new moon in your calendar, because if you've got a UCC, I put all the moons for the whole year on there. And then you establish the zodiac sign and degree at which the new moon occurs. So this, this will approximately correspond to the date that it is in the calendar, yeah? And then you locate this point in your chat, all right? And then again, you look you look at which house is that in for you. And then because it's a new moon, this is the area of our lives that we can plant seeds or set growth aims for depending what house it's in, all right? So let me just show you that again. So if we look at Gemini, let's do, let's do the let's keep it really current, and you can do this now if you want to for the next new moon coming up. So here we go. Look, here's the moon, new moon here. So let's have a look. Let's zoom in a bit. So here's the new moon, sixteen of Gemini. So the new moon is going to be approximately sixteen degrees of Gemini. All right, within a day or so. And if you want to check the Gregorian date, look, there it is, Thursday, the 6th of June. So on the 6th of June, which is the 16th of Gemini, the moon is going to be a, at 16 degrees Gemini, approximately. And there we go. It says new Gemini moon. It's got the Gemini symbol here. Look. So that's telling you it's the new moon in Gemini, 16 degrees. So what you do is you look in your chart, so 16 degrees Gemini in the zodiac is in my 11th house look. So here's Gemini, here's the 5, 10, 15, 16. So the new moon is going to be there for me, and that's in my 11th house, yeah? So for this new moon, I will set growth aims we, or we could say intentions related to sharing my creativity with my networks because that's what the 11th house is all about, yeah? 
And that's what I will do. I'll do a little ritual on the new moon. Um, and I'll light some candles and I'll write down some things I want to achieve. And then the, the, the energy of the new moon then growing to a full moon will support the growth of those aims that I'm setting. And this is how we can really work with the, and the moon energy is really powerful because don't forget how big it is and how close it is to us. So it's really huge, you know, it's a it's an anomaly. There is no other moon that's anywhere near as big in relation to its planet as our moon. So the energy of it, and you know, it moves all the tides, moves all the oceans of the world around. And we, if you remember from the other workshop, we're mostly made of water. So it's going to affect us deeply as well and our emotions. So we can really work with these moon energies now on a new moon. We can set some aims depending on the house it's in. So as we can see, mine's in my 11th house. So I'm going to be setting aims about how I'm going to share my creativity with my networks. For example, doing CPN workshops. Now you can set short term aims for the next 15 days as the moon grows to the full moon in this month. But really, the most valuable thing is to set longer term, six month goals. So this is a new moon in Gemini. All right. And in six months time, the full moon will be in Gemini. So you've got six months growing of the Gemini moon. So the Gemini moon cycle is from new moon in Gemini till full moon in Gemini. And when the moon is full in Gemini in six months time. That's when the, in, the intentions that you set on this new moon in Gemini will come to fruition. So this is a really practical way of using your chart and the calendar. All right, before we go on to the full moon, any questions about the new moon? And this is the next one coming up, so we can really test this out, all right, in real life. That's that's really cool. Um, mine's in the eleventh house too. Um, I, I was just noticing something, like looking at the houses. Um, like I notice the house gaps are not all like you know they're not all equal degrees like the zodiac, right? And then that's right, yeah. The amount of degrees for each house is different for you than it is to me. Like your 11th house is quite big, whereas my 11th house is quite narrow, but then my first house is really big. Um, yep. So I have a, I, I don't understand why that is. Okay. Let me answer that, that one. Yeah. So that's in the last workshop. Okay. I can um, so if you, if you, when you get time, if you have a look back at the last workshop, um, and I and I do refer to it on the slides. Whether that's in the juicy bits pack, I can't remember. I'll have to have a look. But but basically, the reason the houses are different sizes on these charts is because they're using a, a house system called Placidus. All right. Now you don't have to remember that or worry about what it, where it comes from. But it's just the name of the guy who popularized it. All right. He was a monk. Oh. His name was Placidus. So it's actually from a guy called Ptolemy a long time ago. And it's um, it's basically a system that's based on time, right? So it's based on the time of, of various things rising here at, on the date and time and place you were born, all right? And you can see that my... At the time I was born, the earth was tilted over like this. So if you can imagine this in 3D with this globe coming out of the page at you, um, you can see it's all sloped and skewed over. So it's kind of, it's distorted by the by the globe, right? If you, if you rotate a globe towards you, equal divisions of lines, they're going to look they're going to, you know, like a fisheye lens, right? It's going to 
yeah. you know, as it comes towards you, those the gaps between the things are going to get bigger. And then as it passes, they're going to get smaller again. And that's why all of these houses are different sizes. All right. Yeah, I remember now, you there is... about this now. I remember now. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, and it's all in the workshop. So, you know, you can check it back anytime. Um, now, I know when I was first talking with Kath, that she likes uh, the equal house system. And if you want to do an equal house chat, you can do that. And that, that will give you 12 houses, all of 30 degrees. All right. I'm converted now, though. Yeah, you I'm converted, converted, yeah. Hey, nice one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I the equal house system is... Okay, so, so this system we're using... It's called Placidus, but what we can call it is equal time. All right. This is an equal time relative to the time you were born. So the houses are based on equal time at that time. Right. The equal house system is equal space. So we've got time and space. It's like the quadrivium. All right. So, so in an equal house system, you're going to have 30 degree divisions of space, equal space. Yeah. But on the this this system, the Placidus system, you're going to have equal divisions of the time at the time and place you were born, and that's what gives you different size houses. And again, this is one of the things that makes this unique: is the different sizes of these houses. Because what that means is the areas of our lives that the houses represent are bigger or smaller, and what that means because it's a calendar is that we spend more or less days of the year in each house. So as you've pointed out, Anna, my, don't forget the Zodiac's made of poo, right? So it's pairs of opposites. So what you'll notice is your first house is the same size as your seventh house. And your second is the same as your eighth. And the third is your ninth and so on. So you can see my biggest houses are my fifth there and the one opposite the 11th. Now, the fifth house is the house of creativity. So that's where I create things. And I'm in that house from the 25th of Scorpio until the 5th of uh, Capricorn, right? So through through the end of the autumn and in, just into the start of the winter. I'm in my fifth house. Now I can create things there, but where I share them with the world is in my 11th house. This is about sharing your creativity in the public. Because don't forget from the last workshop, all the houses in the top of the chat are the public houses out in the world. These are in the daytime part of the chat. And all the houses below the horizon here or in the nighttime part of the chat they represent our inner world so i might create something in my fifth house that i really like i might never show it to anyone i might never write write it down or publish it or anything but i would if i was in my 11th house Is it, so you see what i'm saying so, yeah, they're all different sizes. And that means, you know, if you do the exercise and you put all the dates in the calendar that you you go into your various houses throughout the year, you'll see that you spend a lot more days in your bigger houses and then fewer days in your smaller houses. And that's that's intentional. That's for a reason. Because what your higher self is saying to you, these are, this is the blueprint I wanted you to have when you incarnated in this lifetime. And I wanted you to focus more on litmus. I wanted you to focus more time of the year on your creativity and more time of the year sharing that creativity with your networks and your groups. And that's why I gave you this birth time and place location that made your chat this way with your big fifth and 11th houses. All right? And you can all do the same. So that's why, so depending where each new moon is, you set your intentions based on the house that it's in for you. Now, then the new moon in Gemini, we everyone on the planet will share 
a new moon in Gemini energy. So you can look up on any website, what does new moon in Gemini stand for? But you know, it's going to be about communication and intellect and all the Gemini things. Yeah. But your, my, my tweak on that, you know, my blend in my house is about, for me, it's about sharing with my networks. And if you, whatever house you've got on that degree of Gemini, it's going to be about that as well as Gemini stuff. It's going to be about that for you, whatever that house is. All right. So does that make sense? Is that as clear as mud? <laughs> Sounds but this is how we can really work with it. Yeah, sorry, go on. I just said it sounds good to me. And yeah, I'm sharing uh, the Gemini moon with you on the 11th house as well. Mm. All right, Anna, well, let's um, let's catch up on the new moon then on the 16th of Gemini. What's the 8th today? So that's in eight days, the 6th of June. And let's, uh, let's see how we go with it, eh? Sounds good. <laughs> All right, cool. Now, we're getting near the end now, guys. So your fourth exercise is full moons. So you can do exactly the same thing, flowing in sync with the moon cycle, the lunar cycle. You, do, you can do exactly the same with the full moons. So you again, you locate the full moon in your calendar. I put all the moons in the calendar for the whole year. You can see what degree... The sign and degree that the full moon is occurring it, and that will approximately correspond to, the, to that date that it's in the calendar at, yeah? And then you find that point in your chart again. And again, you see which house is it in for you, so which area of your life are your planted seeds from six months ago coming to fruition. And also in the short term, what a full moon is about is about letting go. Because on a full moon, the energy has got to its peak and it's going to decline back to a new moon. It's going to go down. So that's a, a full moon is a great time to let go of stuff. And then as the moon shrinks back to a new moon, it will help that energy will help you let go of those things, whatever house you're in. All right. So this, for me, this is the whole point of doing astrology is for these kind of things, you know, practical every day, every month, every year, really working with in sync with the energies, you know, for you as an individual. Again, where things are in signs, this is shared by everyone, but where they are in houses is unique to you and your chat. All right. So let me give you an example again, using my chat. So let's look back at the full moon we just had recently. Here it is in Gemini. So of course the full moon is gonna be in Sagittarius because the full moon is always in the sign that's opposite where the sun is. This, this month here, three Gemini, that's where the sun is in the zodiac, yeah? So the full moon is going to be in the opposite side of the zodiac. So let's zoom in a bit. So here we go. There's the full that's Sagittarius look. So the full Sagittarius moon is opposite the, the sun in Gemini. And that happened on the, in the second, the second of Gemini. So roughly the second degree of Gemini, yeah, in the zodiac. And that was Thursday, the 23rd of May. So if I have a look in my chart where two degrees Gemini is, that'll tell me where the moon is. So all you need to do is look in your UCC and see where the moons are. And then you can see where they're going to be in your chart and which house they're going to be in for you. So here's mine. Look, two degrees Gemini in the Zodiac. That's also in my 11th house. So there's the start of Gemini. And there's two degrees, and that's in my 11th house. So for that full moon, I was reviewing the growth aims, the seeds I planted six months ago when the new moon was in Sagittarius, yeah? 
because that was that was uh so i was looking back at the the seeds i planted then all right so you can you can set short term again 15 days um objectives or longer term six months about letting go of stuff all right right so oops. Now I've, I've I've put I'm just going to leave that slide there for a minute, and I'm just going to ask: Can anyone spot anything wrong on that slide? Just if you can, it'll help me know whether you kind of are getting it, or if we need to go over any of it. Um, so it's, it's it's about what I've put about the reviewing the growth aims of the seeds I planted six months ago related to sharing my creativity with my networks <laughs> without being too obvious. Anyone? Okay, so let me, so the, this full moon, yeah the full moon is in sagittarius all right which is in my fifth house yeah so six months ago i would have been setting intentions about my fifth house all right so just just so you see how it works yeah right let's go so I'm not I I could just leave it there. Uh the only thing the thing I was gonna mention, if we had time, um, was how you sink in with planetary cycles. For example, when planets transit signs. So when a planet changes a sign, that's another cycle that you can follow. I mean, basically, we live in cycles within cycles within cycles within cycles. And there's big cycles and short cycles, long cycles. And we can work with all of those cycles, you know. Um, let me just, I'm not, it's not much on this, but let me just mention it. Um, but really, all, really what I wanted to do today was show you how to work with the solar cycle and the lunar cycle. All right. I don't so if have you, around that. Sorry, what? Sorry? I do have a question around that. Around um, what? Sorry? The lunar cycle. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, like, I, I thought when you were first talking about the moon, so you, you talked about the new moon with Gem the Gemini moon, and then in six months' time, the full moon will be in Gemini. But then you started talking about Sagittarius, and you kind of lost me. Okay, so... Let's go back to the new moon. Yeah. So, so the like new moon. The new moon in Gemini. Yeah. So the new moon. Talk, and then you started the, talking about um, the full, like I'm talking about the full moon, like the full mm -hmm. moon we just had. You worked that out as two degrees Gemini, but isn't wasn't it in Sagittarius? Yeah. No. The the date. The date on which it occurs is two of Gemini, yeah? Oh, okay. But because it's a full moon, yeah, it's in the opposite, because full moons are always opposite. Yeah. So this calendar is a solar calendar. It's telling you where the sun is, yeah? Yeah. So when the sun is at two degrees Gemini, the full moon will be at two degrees Sagittarius opposite, yeah? okay so okay okay i think yeah so yeah so there we go vegetarius so, is where it's located in the sky but yeah. the gemini is where it's located in the calendar in the solar calendar yeah it's saying the oh. sun the sun because don't forget the ucc is a solar calendar it's following the the, hmm. the journey through the year yeah. which is what the zodiac is yeah yeah. And it's it's saying that when the sun is in two degrees Gemini, yeah, 
there's a full moon in Sagittarius. So yeah. the, that full moon is going to be in two degrees of Sagittarius. Okay. But to work yeah. out the house that the moon is falling in, I look at two degrees Gemini. Sorry, what well, yeah. I'm what I'm saying is on that day, on the on the second of Gemini, yeah? Yeah. The sun is gonna be in second of two degrees Gemini, and the moon is gonna be in Sagittarius, yeah? Yeah. So to work out the influence of the house. Yeah. I'm looking at two degrees Gemini. If it's a new moon. Yeah. You, you would look at two degrees Gemini. If it's a full moon, you look at yeah. two degrees Sagittarius. Okay. All right. That's yeah. where I was, that's where I was um, getting confused. Right, which is why I was checking. Did did anyone spot the deliberate mistake? Because okay, so that was what you were talking about. Cause... That's what I was trying to – I was hoping – maybe it's a bit too much, you know, because it's all, it's, it's all new – but it's yeah. just to because this is where we need the iPod, you know, because yeah. with the iPod, we always need to think, well, where am I looking from? Hmm. Which direction am I moving in and which way am I facing and all of that? So yeah. it's it's really it can get very confusing with the yeah. moons. But if you just remember that a new moon is always when the moon and the sun are conjunct, yeah? Yeah. Well, I understand That's that. I was just like, but the confusion was to work out. Okay, so I think the full moon was in two degrees Sagittarius, which then becomes my fourth house if I look at my birth chart. Right. Yeah, you got yeah. it. Right. Yeah. So the, your son. Yeah, jumped around. And your son like, is in. The sun is in Gemini, and the moon is in Sagittarius. Right. Yeah. So look, if I we look at mine. If we look I at mine. Out, yeah. So I wanted to work out the house, though. I had to go to that two degrees Sagittarius. Yeah. So this is this is where, where I'm I'm saying this is the error that I was talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, for the full moon. Human. Yeah, that, that would be where the new moon would be, right? Yeah. But yeah. we're talking about a full moon. Yeah. So the full moon. Thinking, the... <laughs> Maybe it was a bit too fucking sorry, smart ass. But I was, I, yeah, I don't know. I just, I was just hoping it would uh, come across anyway. So there's Miss two degrees. My, um, my Mercury and Pisces freaks out when people put trick questions. <laughs> <in the mix. laughs> sorry. Like, oh my god, my fish go swimming in different direction. Just, just when I thought I was getting it, he goes and puts a bloody trick question in there. I mean, what the hell? It was. Um, yeah. All right. So we're, this we're is too, and 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 everyone's a little bit tired. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's eleven o'clock here now, and it's so it's yeah. it's time to wrap up. But so okay. just to be I clear, just, I just need to clarify that because yeah, it did, it did confuse me. And... Well, good because that's that's what I was hoping. So you've actually answered the question, Anna. All right. Okay. I was. That should confuse you because it's the opposite of what it should be. All right. Yeah. All right. We can move. So on. when, so when we have a full moon, we go over here. That's where the sun is. We go over here, and the second degree of Sag look is in my fifth house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I when I'm looking back six months, I'm looking back to fifth house stuff. The intentions that I set on the new moon in Sagittarius. In my fifth house, all right. Yeah. So what I'll do when I share the slides, I'll put this one in and I'll put up there trick question, all right, and then I'll put <laughs> the actual what it what the real one is, so you can compare the two. And I'm I'm hoping that. I'll... Do I what? Sorry. You have the real one and already, or do you have to add that? Oh, I'll just add that into the pack. Yeah, that will. It just means. Uh, moving a few things you know like this arrow I'll put the arrow down there and I'll change the word in here okay. and then and then that'll be a good one to test your iPod on <laughs> all right so thank you Anna so before we finish 
just a word about planetary sign transits. And the, the reason I put this in is because Jupiter recently, a few days ago, just changed signs and went into Gemini, all right, where the sun is. And where the new moon's going to be and everything. So this is a very current example. Jupiter just entered Gemini four days ago. All right. And Jupiter has a 12, you might remember from last time, 12 years zodiac cycle. So the last time Jupiter went into Gemini was 12 years ago. All right. And actually, if you use the date calculator on the Universal Celestial Calendar website, you can put in the date and um, it'll tell you how many days ago it was as well. So it was 4,370 days ago today um, was, uh, so on the 21st of Gemini this month, that's the 11th of June, all right? But it's 4,370 years ago, to, uh, days ago today, the sun last went into Gemini, all right? So there we go. If we put 11th of June 2012 in, it tells us it was the 21st of Gemini, 13513, all right? So, and you can do that on the app as well, because the app's got the date converter in it as well, as you know. So where's my, there we go, slide. So if you want to have a go at this exercise offline, if you locate the start of the sign, that's the collective, the sign, Gemini, in your chart, and see which house, so for you individually, where that is, where's the first degree of Gemini for you? And then you can look back to Gemini 12 years ago, when the sun, um, Jupiter last went into Gemini, and you can see what Gemini things were happening for you then related to the Jupiter, right? And are there any echoes of that now? Now, I find this stuff really interesting. Um, and you might remember we talked last time about the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. This, this uh, ending tomorrow, actually. That's ending tomorrow, that one. <laughs> And you can look back to when that started, and and that's amazing. You know, I, for me, that was a real revelation. So, so yeah, see where see where Gemini starts in your chart. So you can see for me again, it starts here in my eleventh house. So I know the Jupiter now is is just around here in my chart. So it's Jupiter is expanding my 11th house energies, yeah? So it's, it makes me want to do even more workshops and share even more of my knowledge with more of my friends and networks, okay? So look out. I'm going to start doing one every five days. <laughs> no, no, no more. Um, I but yeah, you know, I'm joking, but I'm, you can see what I'm kind of saying. So you can do that as well. You can see where first of Gemini is in your chart and see what house it's in. And that's the area that's going to be expanding. Litmus, I have a question. Ju through Jupiter. Yes, Charlie. I've got uh, two full houses in Gemini. And then it, so the fifth and sixth house, and then it goes into the seventh house as well. <laughs> then what do you do? Yeah, yeah that's, that's perfectly normal. So you you know you would be looking at both of those houses. Well, what you're looking at is the where the cusp is. So, so if you're, which house did you say it is? The fourth. So in Gemini, for me, I've got my fifth house, the whole of my fifth house, the sixth house, and then the the cusp of the seventh house as well. So it's like two degrees of the seventh house as well. Okay, so it sounds as if then Gemini starts in your third house. Did you did you say your fourth house is the Fifth. first one you Fifth. got in Gemini? Fifth. Fifth. All right. So if you if your first cusp 
is your fifth house in Gemini. That means that Gemini starts in your fourth house, yeah? So right. your fourth house cusp is going to be um, before Gemini in Taurus or something like that, yeah? Yeah. Yeah? I think that's right, yeah. Yeah, I mean... You've got a lot of houses, basically, in Gemini. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's that's normal. Like I've I've got um I mean you can see on my chat here I've got look I've got my ascendant, I've got my first house ascendant there starts in Leo, but then my second one starts in Leo as well. Mm. So I've got so I've got my first and my second house cusps in Leo. So that gives a Leo shine to my personal you know self-identity and my values and wealth issues yeah mm -hmm. but then because of that if we go over here i've got no house cusps in sagittarius or gemini mm. they start before and after so i go a whole month i go more you know i'm you can see from this i'm in my fifth house with there's 30 35 40 40 days 40 degrees in my mm. fifth house and the same in my 11th house. Yeah. But I'm only in my first house for like five, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, six, about 16 days. Yeah. Cause it's much smaller. Yeah. So that gives me less of a, of a focus on my self image. So I'm not, even though I have Leo there, I'm not really bothered about I don't like I'm not bothered about fashion and keeping up with trends and all this bullshit for me bullshit because it's not important to me you know I've got a small first house I'm more interested in my creativity and sharing it with the world because my fifth and eleventh house is in my biggest houses yeah so yeah you can do that for all of your houses and as I say if you put that on your calendar it'll show you how much time each year and each month you spend in each house. So yeah, for the for the purpose of this exercise, um, you know, my, my when Jupiter went into Gemini, there it was in my eleventh house. So I look back to the twenty first of Gemini twelve years ago, and I looked at what was going on in my life then. Um. <laughs> And, you know, my 11th, 11th house is all about sharing and networks. And guess what? Exactly at that time, 12 years ago, I was back in, in England doing like three summer festivals, presenting this stuff to uh, audiences in festivals. I was presenting, I just, just created my calendar. I was presenting my calendar to people. And telling them that it synced with the zodiac, and they were all looking at me like that, <laughs> like, this, like what's this guy on about? But you know, that's what I was doing, and and now I know. I didn't know then, but now I know. That's for me one of the reasons I was doing that is because Jupiter had just gone into Gemini and was expanding my eleventh house energy, which is about sharing your creativity with your networks and and groups, which is amazing, right? But I didn't know any of that then. So I, you know, I love this stuff because it's like it answers so many questions about why we do things when we do them and stuff. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, I hope you you get what I'm saying. But that's that's it, really, guys. Um, for tonight, I think that's more than enough. Again, if you want to actually get a personal, individualized reading from a professional astrologer, I can highly recommend Margarita. But I'm sure you also know people nearer where you are that you might want to i mean it is good to do it face to face if you if you can and um, really get into it or you know do it on a zoom call or something and then you can do it with anyone anywhere in the world but she's who i use and she's great um so we've looked at um the solar cycle syncing with that with the calendar we've looked at the moon cycle and we had a quick look at, the, at an example of a planetary transit with Jupiter, which is happening right now. So very current. So see where that is for you. And that's it. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> yes, Anna. Go on, Anna.
More questions, um, Anna. That's what I want. Come on, <laughs> hit me with more questions. Doesn't stop. <laughs> Um, I just really want to clarify, I think what you're saying with the planetary transit there, like so the energy of that, like say Jupiter going into Gemini is most influential on whatever cusp it's hitting of the house. Is, is that what you're saying? Whichever like, house it's in, you know, the, whatever house the cusp, it's in. I mean, yeah, the cusp so of the like, sign is going to be in a house, yeah? Yeah, so like I'm sort of similar to Charlie, you know, Gemini goes through, like I've got a few houses in Gemini, but it's okay. the particular house that it's hitting when it hits Gemini, that's the one that's getting most influenced by that transit. Is that right? Yes, that's exactly right. Yeah. Okay. So what see where you? first the Gemini is, see where that cusp of Gemini is for you, which house it's in. And then have a look in the juicy bits and see what that house represents. And that's the energy that Jupiter is going to be expanding right now. Not like in the past or you can look back 12 years and see what, what you were doing then, which is a really great thing to do. I highly recommend you do that um, and see what revelations come with that. Um, but yeah, right now it's happening right now. So for me, yeah, expansion of 11th house. Um, so could what you about you, flavors Kath? Will, oh, I was just saying, but then the flavors will, as um, Jupiter goes um, around to the next house, um, then the flavors will change, won't they? Exactly. But that's going to take a year, right? Because Jupiter takes 12 years to go around the zodiac. Therefore, it's in it one sign for a whole year. You know, th this is what the Chinese calendar is based on. This is why we have one animal for a whole year, because it's one Jupiter sign. OK. Yeah. But and I there's 12, there's 12 animals because it takes 12 years for Jupiter to go all the way around the sky. Yeah, I guess I guess what I think, I think what I'm hearing with Kathleen's input, so for like me and Charlie and whoever else, we've got, you know, three signs, three houses in Gemini. So over that year, we're going to have a little bit of a shift in the flavor through those houses. Whereas for you, that whole year has got that big Gemini focus. I mean, that big 11th house focus. But for us, we're kind of moving through a couple of different things. Over that absolutely. Year. Bang on. Bang on, Anna. You got it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Kath, for bringing that up as well. So there you go. That, that's how you can see we've all we're all sharing an expansion of Gemini energy because Jupiter's going through Gemini for everyone. Yeah. But for us individually, how it affects us personally, it's based on our houses, not the signs. Yeah. Houses. It's all about houses. So, yeah, for you guys over the next year, you know, you're going to go through two or three different houses. So as Kath was saying, the, the flavors the areas of your life that are going to be expanded by Jupiter are going to change as Jupiter goes across those house cusps. And they're dates in your calendar, so you can write those in your UCC calendar and you'll know exactly what day that, that that's going to happen when Jupiter's going to change a house for you, yeah? And as you say, for me, I'm very happy to report that I'm going to be in Gemini the whole year, you know, <laughs> Because I've got I've got four planets in Gemini. I love Gemini, you know. I'm Gemini to the max, as you may have noticed. So there we are. Yeah. But I hope that really that's a good good point, Kath and Anna. And I hope that really brings it home to people. This is how one of the main reasons why we're all different energetically, and how we have different energies throughout the year and the month, and all of these different cycles because of our um, difference in our birth charts. So yeah, good stuff, guys. Any and, uh, other questions? I got one more, and then I'll I'll, I'll hand it over do, to someone. Else. Can I just ask Anna? Do you think I'm going to need to look at any slides while you ask this? If not, I'll stop sharing my screen, and we can have a better chat. Uh, no, I was just going to ask. I was just going back to like the the well, the meanings of all the tenth houses, and the one on like I don't really know what you mean by legacy. That was so. Can I can I stop sharing my screen? Yep. Yep. Okay um stop sharing Bray, right right see you now hello hi nice 
to see you. <laughs> yeah, and thank yes. you yes. as well. What's that? Uh, Sorry? I was just saying thanks to Kath for that little bit of like help with understanding the, the Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was really useful. But yeah, the, the tenth house, the legacy, I I wasn't I I'm not totally sure what you mean by that. Okay, so in the last workshop, all I did was give you like one word for each house and one word for each planet and one word, well, I gave you more for the signs. But in terms of the planets and the, the houses, we just, we looked at one word. Now, if you want, I do have a more detailed slide, um, which was in the last presentation, which goes into a lot more detail about what each house represents, yeah? But your 10th house, if you remember that MC, the arrow pointing up, that's the top of your chart. And that represents your public image, your public identity, all right? And it's always between your ninth house and your 10th house, all right? So the 10th house is all about your public image. And your public image is based on the work you do in the public right your career or your mission whatever whatever your life's work I, I call it life's work and legacy if i had to just sum it up i'd say life's work and legacy because your legacy is what you leave behind when you're gone from your life's work <laughs> okay and the reason the 10th house represents that is because it's the top of your chat it's like the midday point of the day yeah in your chat it's like where the sun is it is strongest it's like where you're most illuminated where the light is shining on you and where the public can see you and they can see your work that you publish and you share and they can share that with other people and and they can share your legacy if you publish things you know i got a song called the waking hours that i played with on an earlier podcast recently and that's all about, you know, making the most of the waking hours so that you leave. I, I think there's a line and it says, leave a part of your soul behind in your name. Right. So what I'm talking about there is, is leave a part of your soul behind in your name. You know, like when you're dead, leave some stuff on the Internet and leave, maybe leave some books. You know, I would I'd love to publish a book about all this stuff because that's that's out there then. And it's in the public domain and it's there for our however long books and ebooks and things that are around, you know. But that's what your 10th house is all about. So if you've got Jupiter going in to Gemini and that's in your 10th house, that's just going to expand everything to do with your life's work and your legacy and your public image. All right. Well, that makes a lot of sense with what's going on right now, because it's like the right. transition stage. So that's Excellent. Okay. That's great. Well, it's I make it coming up to half 11 here. So I know we got going a bit late, but that's got to be a good two hours. So that's probably enough for today. Yeah. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Litmus, as our CPN mentor and for another phenomenal class. We truly, truly appreciate it. Always learning so much from you. And, um, and thanks again. And I'm going to stop. Very welcome. Thank you. Peace, love and freedom, everyone.